Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is your host, Dave, behind the camera, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Trumpeter 1350 USS Alabama. And here we go. Get this little set up here. So we'll start with the instruction sheet. Um, one instruction sheet, 20 pages long, and with pretty good detail in there on where things go not too bad not too shabby so we got that that and I believe it does not have a recommended paint colors like a tomato wood so that is your instruction sheet pretty basic straightforward pr pretty simple to follow so we got that and it also comes with a single page coloring scheme that does have the paints and these are Mr. Hobby or Mr. Color used this is actually done this marking here is when she was in the Atlantic for uh, Operation Torch and sailing with the British Home Fleet so you get that also and it also has paint schemes for the Kingfishers so a little closer over the blur there there's the Kingfisher so she actually carried three at one time and comes with your usual black um, stand yeah I'm gonna look into my phone real quick Kind of flimsy, but it'll hold it. So you get that standard nameplate. Uh, there's a place online that you can go and buy actually nice ones for these now. I have to get the link. I'll get the link, I'll put it in there for you. But yeah. And then we'll jump into some frets. So it has 11 frets. And this is fret. Okay, and this is mostly looks like your typical molded on catapults, cranes that are replaceable, searchlights, your Mark 37 radars, searchlights, some bulkheads. One thing I did notice on this one is the molding is not as crisp as some of the other trumpeter kits have been, so I would definitely re think about replacing. Or smoothing those off and putting um, photo etch ones over it. it would do a great honor for it I'll put a link in there to the one that I have found for this kit um, there's your search radar that you know looks like a Arecibo or something okay then we got fret H and I got a smokestack more superstructure I don't see a lot of flash there is these little boogers that you're gonna to have to take off that are going to require some fixing to do there is some underside detail here but not much uh, you can always add um, some flat or square styrene to bring that up if you want and I don't see a lot of injection molds which is good so far And we're moving on to fret J uh, this is the main superstructure and of course it's got the molded on ladders that you're gonna have to sand and take off and there's some of your flint your shields for your 20 and 40 millimeter guns the four bladed props look pretty good let's like say there's not a lot I don't see any flash on this so it must be a fairly new mold and then there are no injection marks on the tops uh, I see some swirls and little circles in this one here. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. But those are probably most likely to be covered. And then we have two. Those are two of these. Of E. Two E's. Both the same thing. Um, 20 millimeter Orlikens. Some pedestals some range finder tubs 
Of course, I've replaced these barrels. Make sure you get the 1645, not 1650 for this. She had shorter barrels than the Iowa class. Some ammo, ready ammo lockers here. There's some decent little detail on them. They might be usable if you don't put the paint on too thick. Uh, molded on ladders. Definitely replaced with photo etch. Looks like we have a paravane there. Cutting uh, mines. It's got some detail, but probably could use a little more. Some vents. So that's, that's the two E's you get. Let me get into... Uh, this is A. Oops, sorry about that. Um, there is molded on decking. Um, it's uniform like, you know, all these are. Um, but, yeah, it's replaceable. Uh, the vents could probably use some small screen inside there to bring it out more. You can find it online, a wire mesh. Um, none of the conning tower holes are pre-done, so you might want to think about drilling those out, putting a piece of photo etch around them. Some of the bulkheads do have the portholes drilled in them already, as you can see the main there. Uh, more watertight doors that definitely could use some photo etch. Bow brake seems to be alright, not a lot of flash there. Tubs look good. These doors just, this ain't one of their better detailed kits than what it looks like, but I'm sure this thing can be done into a monster nice kit. And we have fret B. And we have some, looks like a, well, what are those? I don't know what those ones are. This is part of, there's your five bladed screws. Make sure you get those in the right place, they seem to be pitched right. More of bulkheads with the little doors that probably could use that. Here's the top of the conning tower right there. Here's the front of the conning tower with some dimples. I don't see any injection marks on the outside, which is good. Some more little davits. Not too bad. We have two of these. Looks like two of these. Yep, because she doesn't have four turrets. So you also get C and C again. Um, this one has your turrets, tops, and the bottoms, and the sides. Looks like these are done in three piece, four piece, three piece. Yep. So you got to glue that on. Make sure the tops are straight. Photo edge kit may cover the side if you have to glue these on and you got that seam right there. We cover it. I would strongly recommend replacing the 5 inch with 3D printed ones, some brass barrels, because these are going to be fun to try to get rid of all these seam marks from this right here. All along here, and plus the line going down the back. Splinter shields still look good here. Gun tub looks good. Um, looks like I would definitely see if the photo edge kit comes with a top, because there is some injection marks there face looks right, you're going to have to take those molded on ladders off as usual. That ain't too bad. At least those, these are on here good. There. You can see the rivets in there, but I would definitely think about replacing the 5 inch 38 dual purpose gun with uh, some nice 3D printed ones. And there's five, she has five on each side. Like we have two D's, same thing, boats. Another thing, too, to consider would be getting 3D printed um, 40 millimeter Oricons, replace those along with the rafts. You can buy one 350 photo watch rafts that have a lot better of that detail than that. Your Mark 37 gun deflectors here, I'd replace those with photo etch or photo etch and a resin part or you can get the um, black cat models actually makes one that's complete you don't have to do anything about it it's all there um, definitely replace the five inch barrels with brass if you can the rudder looks pretty accurate there's the top of the radar spotting dome turn it over don't see a lot of injection marks thank goodness um, the boats, the little boats right here, 
could use a little more TLC and love definitely um, some maybe some uh, wood down there at the bottom I know you could paint it but I like the wood look better definitely something to think about but there's two sets of those um, so that's it on frets grab this and the curious thing about this one is let me lift this camera up is this thing can be built waterline or standard hull and I've already seen one problem with the hull it looks like they've cut out these little supports here and here but it's bowed in really good so I would do one side at a time definitely to get it tight and then reinforce this whole area here and possibly up here and in the bow section to tighten this up because it, it wants to pull in real bad see doesn't want to get down in there so that's something to reinforce this but I would glue one side reinforce it with glue before you go to the next side so you have a nice seam or nice tight fit and you're going to have one heck of a seam line to work with too um, yeah that's a nice seam line to work with so like I say I've seen some better to me uh, correction trumpeter kits out there um, measures about 11 or what was it 20 23 inches long so that's kind of decent size um, get this out of the way like I say you can do it full hole or you can do it waterline and looks like it's wanting to do the same thing so I would definitely even with the waterline I would put some good square stock in here reinforce that down the road to get it nice and tight because it I'm having to bow this side out pretty good to get it to fit so it, you can see pretty flexible even with the struts in there maybe even think about putting some here where it's solid too here across here and up here just to reinforce that bad boy um, the deck comes in you got the bow piece and you got the of course the molded on chain to come off joy definitely worth drilling that out maybe the photo etch kit will have some good parts for it but you are going to have a three piece deck as usual and you're going to have one nasty seam line two nasty seam lines to deal with I strongly recommend a wooden deck for this one and you're also going to have a seam back here so yep there's, still, there's a gap there even when pushing tight you can still see it so definitely a wooden deck may come with the kit that I look at or if you're doing it in a certain color they make a um, a light blue deck to go with it so that's that uh, what I do with the decals uh, let's see on the top of my head typical um, the planes come in uh, clear plastic that seems to be the trend now for the Kingfisher there's two sets in that bag I just didn't want to take it out because there's some lose the prop or something out of that standard decal set with American flags and uh, I believe it has the hull numbers on it yeah, so there's your standard set, American flags, instant uh, the Jack Ensign, and hull numbers, bow and stern. Doesn't you know well, has the number there, but can't read it in black. So that is it. Overall, I'd say it's a decent kit. Um, definitely a lot easier, I would say, than a Tamiya kit. Um, because they're you know to my hour to me it is they're all detailed 
Um, we'll say not a lot of flash. Um, I notice this seems that be, will be the gap, and this piece here is going to give you some problems because it is flexible. I would definitely reinforce that to the max. Um, you may say double sided because this piece here, I'm, it's you can bend it pretty good. See. So you don't want that to happen to your ship, and then it's got the molded on booms as usual. So, well that's it. That is my review. Um, I also picked up, um, I do a new model that I haven't done before. I tend to find books on it, and I managed to pick up this one on the South Dakota class, which he is the South Dakota class. Um, these are getting very hard to find. You have to kind of Google search around because they're not being printed anymore. But they uh, definitely show some good detail. And even, even the documentation um, shell rounds. It's a shell round going out of the superstructure and through something else. Uh, that was during her nighttime, in, nighttime engagement with uh, the Japanese forces at Guadalcanal. I believe that was... South Dakota but there's a lot of detailed pictures that the Navy took of like the superstructure and the radars and your rigging so this is all great reference and I have a pile of these books and I use them all the time so but that is my review if you're looking for this it's uh, from classic warship publishing if you're interested in doing that and want to learn more about a South Dakota class be my guest I hope you enjoyed this quick and down and dirty video. Like I say, I'll post uh, some links in there for some photo etch and decking and 3D printed parts. So you know what you're going to get. Alrighty, y'all take care.